when I first saw this next guest on our list, I was like, huh? I thought we were talking about a yogurt company. That is not the case with us now. Steve Carroll, he is the owner of the Great Lakes Yurt Company. Steve, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. Okay, am I the only one who didn't know what a yurt was? Not at all. No, that's very <laughs> common occurrence. And uh, the yogurt, you know, cross-reference has been done many times for sure. Some confusion there. <laughs> oh, good. So I, I don't seem like, uh, or I don't feel like such a dumb blonde then. Not at all. So. <laughs> so what is a yurt? A yurt. So a uh, yurt is a round wood framed structure uh, wrapped in canvas, uh, similar to a teepee. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a Mongolian design. They've been used in Mongolia for thousands of years uh, by the nomads, easily movable. They follow the herds of the grazing animals around. Um, kind of turned into an American culture thing in the camping industry and some of the counterculture industry, you know. Um, yeah. It really is an amazing um, little building or hut per se. Uh, but with that too, I, I would think during the middle of this pandemic, have you seen an increase in sales or you, people wanting these? We have, we've seen a huge increase in sales. So, um, you know, a lot of it, as soon as the pandemic really rolled out last March, it slow, we saw the slow of sales. Normally March is a real big month for us. Uh, a lot of people getting ready for the warmer months. Um, so March was really slow about mid April. We got really busy. Um, a lot of people are, using their recreational property that they haven't done anything with in years and always talked about and a lot of people have had a lot more time at home a lot more time with the family and i think that spurred a lot of a lot of it and then the other side is the camping industry a lot of our years go to campgrounds um, airbnb type locations where people are just getting away getting back to nature and that industry has gotten really popular as well with COVID. So that's been a big part of our sales also. It really is fascinating. Uh, I'm thinking about people who maybe bought a piece of land up north or along the lake shore and they haven't done anything with it. This is a great thing, but do you need a permit to um, actually um, put this, put your year up? Yeah, well, that depends a lot on where you're at, you know, across the country or across the state. Every municipality has their own ordinances and their own zoning laws. Um, and it also depends greatly on what you want to use it for. Um, we get a lot of people that want to use them as permanent dwellings and live in them. And we have a lot of people that do do that um, for it's a little more for the, the hardcore outdoor enthusiasts. I don't recommend it for everyone. Um, and it just depends because there's no you're... bathroom in it. You'd still have to have an outhouse, right? Well, you can put bathrooms. You can um, really do anything you could do in a house in a year. Definitely. You can do full plumbing and electrical and uh, heating and cooling systems. So, but, but if I do a yurt, um, because it is canvas and we're talking about Michigan and snow, can it collapse? Um, no, so uh, you know our bigger our bigger yurts are structurally engineered for to meet all the codes in Michigan as far as wind speed and snow um, pounds per square foot of snow load. The you know they are framed out really good. It's a it's a canvas covered structure though with thin walls, and that's the biggest difference is it's got a thin wall that you know you can hear through the sound travels and it's a it's a heat management program. We insulate. We insulate our yurts. There's several um, layers of liners and they're insulated. We've got full size locking doors, full insulated, uh, you know, double hung or single hung windows. Um, it's just a thin wall structure. So uh, Steve Carroll with us here on the Mega Cast. He's the owner for the Great Lakes Yurt Company. How in the world did you get involved in this? Yeah, it just fell into my lap, really. So I'm a local builder here in Southern Michigan and Grass Lake, Michigan. I had a friend who had this wild project idea to put a yurt on his little farm and move a guy into it and film a documentary. And um, 
get him back to nature, really. He's a city kid. So that's where I came in was the yurt. We looked at kits to build yurts, which there's several companies in the United States that have been around for a long time, uh, mainly out on the West Coast. And we looked at the price, and it really wasn't in the budget. So we got some plans and built our own yurt. <laughs> so and we then, did it. Yeah, so I will say it. So I went um, to Africa, and as part of our trip, at the end of it, we went on a safari. And this kind of reminds me of the tents that we stayed in. It's like glamping, ultra high level. But these are not something that you know you put together quickly. It's not a pop up tent. Uh, it, 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 what is the uh, process of actually putting it together? Yeah, so we do recommend they go on a solid foundation. Um, wood framed is normally what people do. It's an elevated wood framed foundation. It's a circle deck, basically. And the yurt really only takes a couple days to put up with our kits. They only take a couple days to put up, and that's been a big draw with these people that have property in mo a lot of northern Michigan or lakeside properties where they want to have something to use. And within a week or so, you can get a structure, weatherproof, lockable structure that you can use and it's affordable. Steve, this is glamping. Absolutely. <laughs> we fell into the glamping world, definitely. I'm an old hiker, camper, um, you know, the glamping word I was, was a bad word to me for a couple of years though, but as the year thing came along and we've embraced it, it makes a lot of sense to me, definitely. And it's actually got us into a lot of our customers or campgrounds and airbnb hosts and it's actually gotten us into um that game a little bit so we bought some property in the upper peninsula last year um, in paradise michigan on the sheldrake river we put up a few years for an airbnb style campground that we started a little bit last year but we just got permits and we're all legit to go full this year so <laughs> you're like yeah we kind of did this glamping thing steve you need me as your marketing person <laughs> because glamping is where it is. So when we went to Africa, we were like, we need this in the United States. You know, this is so awesome. But with that, you know, I know there's been such a huge shortage for so many of these restaurants trying to get igloos and garden sheds. This really seems like it could be a good supplement for them to be able to even utilize year round. Have you seen more of these restaurants taking advantage of this? We have. We've just started getting into that. We've got one one of our bigger years at a restaurant in Traverse City. That's a bar, and they do. They've got a lot of food trucks in the parking lot in the summer. Well, in the winter, the parking lot is empty, so they put up a a year last uh, a few years ago that they did music events and different type of events that was very successful. And then with COVID, we ran into the issue of the restaurant closed down. Right, and one of the one of the ways to get around that was to have private dining areas and the igloos we saw a lot of, you know, even before COVID were started, just to make good use of this outdoor space that in the winter normally sits empty. Um, so I have a good friend of mine, um, Jason and Susie Povich, they own the Grateful Crow in Chelsea, Michigan, a uh, new restaurant that actually opened in the midst of COVID trying to figure it all out. And um, they contacted me about doing some smaller private dining yurts to fit with the COVID regulations. And uh, so we've got, we've got their patio with, I believe there's six yurts over there now. They are, they're smaller than what we normally do. They're a little different than our normal yurt. What we normally do, they're a lot smaller and just a little bit of the design. Our normal yurts have full doors, um, these ones are basic like flap doors, but they do have heat in them and they, they've been great for the restaurant from my understanding. They've made a huge difference when you couldn't really do anything before besides takeout. Now they can actually provide a space. And even when COVID isn't an issue, if you've got a successful restaurant and a full dining room, you could always use extra space. Right. And, 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 you know, you can charge extra because it will be that private dining experience, but you can really kind of check these up and make them cool, but, or make them, um, uh, you know, that outdoor camping type thing. I probably just, you probably just cringe when I said, check them up. <laughs> I see you. You're like, no, 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 don't do that. 
<laughs> no, and it's you know what it's done for like the Grateful Crow. They're good. They uh they really have an eye for design and look, and they've turned in into a little village outside of the restaurant. It, it's uh with all the snow on it and it's lit up. And it's really beautiful. So with that, um, because one of the things that some of the restaurants are running into with the igloos is that heat cold, heat cold, because they're trying to put space heaters and keep them warm inside, but yet you're facing Michigan's winters, and right now we're in a polar vo vortex that they're starting to rip. This seems like it's built um, like on a wood frame, right? And then heavy canvas, heavy duty canvas. So yeah. it, it maybe wouldn't be um, fall victim to the temperature changes like that? No, they're definitely durable. The material is, um, it's all fire retardant and mildew resistant. And it's, um, it's, it's mainly marine type materials that we use. And it's been proved in the marine industry for years. And they're very durable. Um, I would be very surprised to have anything rip. So I, I'm looking at your website and it's durable materials, affordable pricing, easily, easy assembly. That's true. You know, a lot of the, <laughs> that's true. A lot of our customers put up the yurts by themselves. Um, some of them have really no experience with tools or erecting any kind of structures. And we've had a lot of great success stories um, and people, I mean, we've, over the years, we've designed our kits to kind of get them down and try to make them as simple as possible with the best results and uh we i think we've got that the last couple of years has been fun it's, it's selling yurts is fun the yurt people are the greatest they really are so steve i want to tell you it's valentine's weekend and i'm going to be asking my husband that i want there's a small plot of land um over near our house and it like you can't build on it right but it's near the lake but i can put a yurt on it so that's Absolutely. going to be my Valentine's uh, request. <laughs> there you go. Have him give me a call. We can work something out. And you know, it is, that's a perfect type of property for a year. It's these properties that aren't buildable. And they're actually, if you look at, you know, some of the properties up north that aren't buildable, but they're by water, they're very affordable and you can put a year. And the thing about the year is you can take them down quicker than you can put them up. Um, you know, so they are mobile. You could put it up somewhere for a, period of time and take it down and move it to a different piece of property or that sort of thing. Give us a price range. Um, anywhere from about 7,000 to up to 20 some thousand dollars. So it, it, it's similar to maybe a tiny house. Absolutely. We're definitely in the tiny home uh, group. Uh, do you expect that this, uh, the yurts is going to explode this arena for people to buy these? Um, I hope, you know, I hope, but expect, I don't know. We'll see. I just, the, it's an industry that's been growing for years. The glamping industry has thrown a lot of fuel on the mm -hmm. fire of it. Um, the tiny home thing, even though, like I said, I don't think it's necessarily the best choice for everybody for our permanent dwellings, but so we have a lot of customers that do it and thrive and love it. Um, I hope it lasts, you know, we're going to keep doing it as good as we can and try to keep it going for as long as the wave lasts. I will tell you, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I want a yurt. <laughs> there, so the outside of a yurt is one thing. You walk inside of a yurt, it's very upscale. Um, the outside, in my opinion, is they're very simple. They're very, um, you know, there's not a lot to them. Inside is really the roundness and you've got the exposed woodwork up against, you know, so we've got an interior liner that's also mildew resistant, fire retardant. It's white and easily cleanable. So you have that contrast from the wood in the background. The inside is definitely where it's at in your year. That is so awesome. And again, before we let you go, I just love this, by the way. Uh, what is your website? www.greatlakesyurtco.com. And I would assume you have social media as well. Yeah, we're on Facebook and Instagram, and we're not the best at keeping it up to date, but we try, and we've got a, you know, we're, we're all on there for sure. Okay, I am going to say, Steve, you need to get a check on your marketing team because glamping is where these things are going to go. Yeah, I won't argue with that. You are absolutely right. Marketing <laughs> is not a, my strongest suit, but we are growing, and we do have good people on the team and we're trying to figure out how to how to hit it with the masses and we've got our product now we're very confident in what we're doing and putting it out we have 
you know, the last year especially it was just great, flawless, no problems, nothing but happy customers. Um, so we feel like our product is at the point where we are ready to hit the masses. That is so awesome. I will also say this is a great opportunity for so many businesses and restaurants that are struggling to find the igloos and the garden sheds because they are sold out right now. This is a great product, but also it, it's it's cooler and um, it's local. You can support Michigan. Steve, so great to have you with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And one more note, those, uh, so the, are that pricing that I gave you doesn't really, the restaurant yurts are smaller and they're not really on our website yet, but the pricing is a lot lower on the on the smaller restaurant type year. So that pricing I gave you isn't quite accurate, but appreciate your time. Thank you very much. You've been so fun. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Have a great day.